Hello, this is a video about my experience with COVID. For those of you who don't know, my name is Kelly. I am an advocate in disability rights and an artist living here on Garden Country in Adelaide, South Australia. I am a wheelchair user, I have cerebral palsy, I am autistic and I have ADHD. I want to make this video even though I'm in my pyjamas because I'm feeling very frustrated right now about the fact that the Federal Health Minister, Federal Government and Health Practitioners alike are talking about what a shame it is that there are low numbers of people taking up the offer of antiviral medication for COVID without seeming to understand the many barriers that stand in the way for people who need that medication to actually get it. So this is my experience as accurately and eloquently as I can articulate it at this point. I was diagnosed uh, with COVID about six weeks ago, I believe. And because I have cerebral palsy, which affects my breathing, my regular GP, who understands me very well, and I had always planned for me to go on antiviral medication immediately if I tested positive for COVID. Unfortunately, my regular GP was not working at the time I had tested positive, and so I got given a an appointment with a different GP at the same practice, which is usually fantastic. This GP seemed unclear about whether he could prescribe antiviral medication to me because I'm under 65 years of age. So he called the advice line to get some information about that. Once he had got clearance to prescribe um, antivirals to me due to my high risk because of cerebral palsy, regardless of my age, um, he then asked me if there was a chance that I could be pregnant. I said, being very literal, if you mean there is any chance at all, the answer is yes. He then, <laughs> he then asked me if I would pr provide a pregnancy test to prove I was not currently pregnant due to doctors not currently knowing the full effects of um, antiviral medication on pregnancy. I explained, however, that I was currently on my period and that all my current sexual partners who would otherwise be able to get me pregnant had had vasectomies that had been proven to be effective uh, some time ago. So it was extremely unlikely. And adding to that, I was not able to go and get a pregnancy test because being positive for COVID, I could not currently leave my house. I feel that the point is that pregnant or not, which I was not, I should have been able to make an informed choice about my body. And given that there is a five day or so window of effectiveness for antiviral medication, I was very anxious to get on it as soon as possible. It became quickly clear that I wasn't going to get anywhere with this particular GP unless I could provide a pregnancy test, which I could not do for reasons previously stated. So I decided to ring a different practice that could get me in with a telehealth appointment. Little did I know that this would be an even worse experience. This GP this time refused to prescribe antiviral medication to me unless I could provide official documentation proving that I had a diagnosis of cerebral palsy. I explained to her that this would be incredibly difficult given that I was diagnosed at the time of my birth, which was an incredibly traumatic time for me, although I don't remember it, and my parents. Therefore, no real documentation of that diagnosis remains. I don't have it because it was 30 years ago and I was busy being born, and my parents don't have it because they took the doctors at their word um, at that time in 1988. So it unfortunately became clear that I wasn't going to get assistance from that GP either. At this point, my housemates stated that they were actually more worried about my stress levels than my actual COVID symptoms, given that I had a limited window to get access to this medication, and I was very worried that I would get very sick um, if I didn't get it, given that I have previously ended up in hospital just with the flu, let alone a pandemic, pandemic level virus. So I made the decision to move into hospital, knowing that I could get access to antiviral medication there, and I wouldn't be putting my support workers at risk. There's another story 
around support work at this time, but I will save that for another video. So I made arrangements to move into hospital via ambulance. I want to state that SA ambulance were very responsive and helpful given my situation and very sensitive, understanding that this was a difficult situation with me, given that I have a lot of trauma from previous negative, to say the least, hospital experiences. So I moved into hospital and ended up staying the night because it was quite late uh, by the time I got there and no one was on staff available to prescribe antiviral medication to me. Although it called back to my trauma, I agreed to stay in hospital overnight thinking that this would be the quickest and easiest route to get access to the medication I desperately wanted and needed. So come the morning, I left a hospital with what I believed to be a prescription for both anti antibiotics for a small lump of fluid that they'd found in my lungs when they did a scan and a prescription for antivirals. Turns out I was very wrong. When I arrived home, SA Health and the COVID response teams, who did an excellent job of taking care of me, rang to check which medication I had received. When I read out the names on the prescriptions, I was told that these were not antiviral medications at all. They were prescriptions for two separate antibiotics, which I could have received easily without going into hospital. So I'd essentially spent a traumatic night in hospital um, uh, completely unnecessarily. My stress and anxiety levels were extremely high at this point. And this was about day three or four following my diagnosis. So I now had a very limited window of time rem remaining to get access to antivirals while they would still be effective. Thankfully, the person on the phone line um, made sure that I did get access to antiviral medication prescription very quickly at that point and I was able to get a good friend to drop them off to me as I didn't want to rely on my frankly aging parents who are already carers to my older brother. I'm aware that I'm very lucky as not everyone has a circle of close friends or family uh, in their lives at all or nearby who can drop supplies off in an emergency when needed. I'd also like to state that once I got access to antiviral medication my experience with COVID was one where I felt very looked after. Um, the team at the COVID response team, SA Health and the ICC, did an excellent job of checking on me every day and making sure I was doing the best that I could. However, it is very clear from my experience that GPs and medical professionals seem to be getting very inconsistent information about the information they need to prescribe and whom they can prescribe to. And my concern that this is that this is putting very vulnerable, vulnerable people at risk. That's why I'm calling on the federal government to make it easier and faster for vulnerable people to access antiviral medication and to spread accurate, easily available information to medical practitioners so they can easily and quickly prescribe antivirals so that no one feels left, is left feeling vulnerable and anxious at a time when they already have enough to deal with. I will put some calls to action and ways that you can join in on this campaign in the comments on this video or in my link tree in my bio if you're watching this on Instagram. Thank you so much for your help. Let's make change.